Hey, in this episode of A Dumb Great, we're going to be showing you how to do ballast for a transformer, specifically a microwave oven transformer. It's basically just a big resistor with a lot of resistance so that you don't pop the breaker on your circuit. Problem is, if you use a regular resistor, like a tiny one, like this big, it's just going to explode because 120 volts is a lot of energy and it'll just melt right through it. But this is a light bulb that's designed for 120 volts and it has a high enough resistance so that it won't pop the breaker. That's the magic. It's gonna happen. Magic. Mm -hmm. Magic. Magic. So we've soldered on to the ends of it just some wires. Uh, I like that one but quite good. Uh, so we're gonna attach this to our transformer uh, between the outputs. That way uh, before you can actually close the circuit it has to run through here. Um, and that of course will make it run through these light bulb which will absorb a lot of the voltage thus making it not short our breakers out when we turn it on. This is important if you want to use a microwave transformer or another transformer in your house and you don't want to be busting fuses all the time because this will make sure that the voltage doesn't ever go too high. However this will also limit the current on your output. Yeah so you will lose some of the punch but you will also save money. So now we're going to set up a little stand to put it on. We use ceramic. It got so hot it cracked the ceramic, so do make sure to be, you know, careful with this. Don't touch it. Don't be licking it while it's running. It's not good for you. Here you can see the inputs to the primary coil of the transformer. We have them hooked up to wires that we are going to connect to our resistor. Okay, there's one. On the output we have this wire, which is attached to a cable with an alligator clip. And for the other output, we have the body of the transformer, and that's just going to be attached to this wire, which also has an alligator clip at the end. So we've got the plug, which goes through the resistor into both the inputs. Okay, so now we're going to turn it on. When we plug wire. it in, and when we flip the switch on, when we complete the circuit up here, soon you'll see it heat up, and then when you complete the circuit, the light comes on. It flashes on whenever you connect the output. There's one bright light. It's hard to look at even through the welding goggles. It's very hot, too, which is why it cracked our ceramic tile. You can see the arc it's producing. Much more tame than an unhinged transformer would be, but that's the cost you have to have for longer running times. You can see you can still get some pretty decent arcs with it. And, like you're about to see, you can still burn things, like potatoes. Like potatoes. I found a potato outside. We're gonna stuff it on the thing. Yeah. So we're just going to punish it. Ready? Yeah, aye, aye. Aye, aye, Captain. I can't hear you. Who lives in a pineapple under the sea? The copper uh, electrodes we used leached off into this. They actually electrolyzed and made patinas. It's so cool. <laughs> Here's a fun little thing we saw on the backyard scientist a long time ago. He puts salt water on his uh, wood and then he electrocutes it. And We're going to be using this transformer still. Burn powder, yeah. Plug it in now. Turn it on. Oh my. You can see immediately sparks are being formed. And it's making its way downtown. To the electrode. And when they touch, you can see it arcs. It arcs. Hey, everybody, did the news get around about a guy named Butcher Pete? Oh, Pete just flew into this town and he's chopping up all the women's meat. He's hacking and whacking and smacking. 